Hi everyone, today I want to introduce you all to a feature in GHC where it can actually support some custom type errors. Um, so if there's a particular scenario that, uh, that your users might run into and you want to have a custom error message for that case, uh, you can actually encode that and, and, and change what GHC will print. So let's, let's dive in and look at a simple example. Um, so let's start up the GHCI here. So if I open up GHCI and then I'll load my file, which is quite basic here. Oh wait, let me make sure that's saved. Okay. Um, so now here, um, I'm not using anything from the file. Let's say I just try to show not. No instance for show bool arrow bool. You know, that's not all that helpful. I mean, to an advanced Haskeller, yes, we kind of know what that what that's about. But if let's say we're looking at beginners or we're in a much more complicated setting where where uh, your users might not know sort of the details of the show class, it's it might not be clear exactly what's going wrong here. So what I want to do is I want to create an instance for show for functions. Um, but when this instance gets selected, I don't actually want to select the instance. I want to print out a custom type error. So that's really the case that type error is, uh, is for. Um, so the body here isn't going to matter very much. Uh, but I think I need to put something in. Um, uh, just to satisfy, we don't want to have that, that funny warning here. And what I want to do here is I want to make a context to this instance that has my custom type error. So I can say type error, and then we have to figure out what to put in there. So for this, I want, I'm going to jump over to the documentation over here. So I've, I've pre-cooked this. Um, so this is in the ghc.typelets um, uh, module, which you can import. And there's this type family called type error, and we give it an error message, and it returns any kind B. So we can use this in all kinds of places. So we'll see another example of that in a few minutes. Um, but here, this A, this, this argument type error is of kind error message. So that means it's built up using these bits here. So we're going to use the most basic part for now. We'll see the others in just a moment. So text symbol. Symbol is just what GHC calls type level strings. And so if I pop back over here, I can write text can't print out functions. And OK, so now, of course, we're going to get our usual slew of errors. So let's start fixing the errors here. Um, not in scope. Well, let's import ghc.typelets. And here, oh, yes, we'll need data kinds. And we'll need undecidable instances. So this isn't really undecidable, right? But, but GHC isn't quite clever enough to know that this type error won't do strange things. Um, and so we'll, we'll just use the quick fix and add undecidable instances. Um, and is that it? Oh, that's it. Haha, -ha, good. OK. So now if I pop down here and reload my file, and now if I say show not, oh, no, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? That should work. Because not has type bool arrow bool, and I said that there is an instance. If I comment, is, is this actually working? Did I not? Maybe I forgot to save. Let's try that again. Ah, that's better. OK. Always remember to save before reloading. Um, that's one thing that's kind of missing in, in the VS Code Haskell language server integrations. I can't easily load into GHCI. Um, OK, so down here, so look at this. I get can't print out function. So I've changed the error message printed out by GHC by using this type error. So the way that this works is that as GHC is about to print out errors, it kind of looks around for any error uh, where there's a type that mentions this type error stuff. So this can actually even be buried in a whole bunch of other things, and, and we'll, we'll still see the message. It sort of looks all around and tries to find a type error. Uh, again, we'll see an example of that in, in just a few minutes. Um, so here we've printed out some text, but maybe I want to do even better. And so I can underneath this, so this colon dollar dollar colon thing, that's this constructor here of error message. And it allows me to stack two pieces of error message on top of each other. So it's like a new line. Um, so below this, I want to say specifically, can't print something of type. Um, and then I'm going to use 
let's format this a little bit. Uh, then what's the other one? Oh, it's this funny diamond operator. Um, and here, instead of just some text, I actually want to print out the A and the B from over here. And so I can use show type. And show type will actually render types. So I can say show type A arrow B. Is that too many clothes? Oh, oh, now it probably wants type errors or something like that. Is that right? Uh, uh, yes, use, oh, not type errors. Of course not type errors, type operators. That's what I meant to say. Um, okay, oh good, we're green. So now if I reload and I do show not, now we get this extra line. Specifically, can't print something of type bool arrow bool. So what it's actually done here is it's substituted in. We, we, we knew that this should be bool arrow bool. Um, and then it substituted in the bool arrow bool over here and then actually rendered that using GHC sort of built-in facility for printing out types. That's, that's kind of cool that you can do that. Um, so this is, this is somewhat powerful here. Let's get rid of that error that's gone now. Um, and um, okay, so this is sort of its basic usage, um, already pretty useful. The other time that something like this is useful is in case you're defining type families over your fancy types, and then there's a case that you just sort of want to exclude for some reason. Um, so we'll do that using our usual friend of unary um, natural numbers here. So if we have data nat like this, uh, why is this complaining? That looks like a quite a sensible thing. Oh, ambiguous blah blah blah. Um, I want to hide nat. Okay, good. Um, and now I'm going to make a subtraction function, oops, uh, which is going to be a type family. So A minus B. So let's see, um, anything minus zero is that thing. The successor of one minus the successor of another is just subtract these. But now we have this case here, zero minus anything is a type error um, like this. All right, so if I want my pattern match to be complete, I need to have this last case. So now, hold on, it's complaining about stuff. What is it complaining about now? Oh, um, this is also some confusion about what I'm talking about. So I want to exclude the minus sign, which is also exported from typelets. Um, okay, so here now I'm getting some bug. Oh, yes, I do want standalone kind signatures. Good. And now what are you complaining about? Uh, yes, I want type families, please. Thank you. And now what's next? Oh, we're green. Excellent. Okay. Um, so here, if I re, let's save and reload, uh, good. Now, if I evaluate, say zero minus suck zero, what are we gonna get? We get a stuck type family. That's not exactly what we, what we expected from this. So this starts to show us that this type error facility in GHC, it's a little bit flaky. Um, but we can we can get it to trigger. So now um, if I make another data type built on this, so this is going to be our usual friend fin and data fin n where zero is whoops fin of suck n and suck at fin n goes to fin suck n. Okay, so now it's probably complaining that this isn't in scope. So let's bring it in scope. Oh, and now is this complaining about gadgets? Yes, it is. Okay, now we're green again. Excellent. Um, and now, if I try to define fin of zero minus suck zero, um, I have to put some right hand side here. Now, we might wonder, is this a type error? No, it's not. Look, I'm green here, and indeed I can load this into GHCI. So even though I said zero minus suck zero should be a type error, we haven't gotten the error yet. On the other hand, if I say y equals x, now here we get the error negative natural. Um, so that's kind of strange. Let's let's see. Can we do better? Um, this would be minus. I don't know. Let's just experiment. So now if I flip this around, minus b here. I have to name it. So this would be negative show type b. That looks like it should probably work. Let's see. Negative natural, this would be minus suck zero. Oh, we probably want some parentheses. So we can do that. Let's get that to look nice. 
Okay. Oh, uh, it doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like this? Expected. Oh, I need to say text, don't I? Okay. Um, and now here, this would be minus suck zero. Oh, that's quite nice of it. Does this work for other things too? If I say suck zero minus suck suck zero. Oh, it still gets it right. Oh, yay. Look at that. Okay. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Again, if I have X here, that's not a type error, even though it really kind of should be. So the way that this type error works is it will only get printed if there's some other sort of inspection going on of the type. In the case down here, that inspection is when we try to generalize the type of Y. So GC is inferring what the type of Y is, and it's that inference action that causes the type error to be reported. Um, so we can get something like this to happen here as well, I think. Let's try. If I turn this into a partial type signature like that, now I get an error here, negative natural. Um, see, this is kind of strange, right? It, it really, if I got the error before, I should get the error now. If I get the error now, I should have gotten the error before. But it's just sort of the way that this flows through GHC. So it's a bit flaky. The actual reason I was inspired to make this video is because there is an improvement to this facility being proposed around something called unsatisfiable. So I'm gonna to link to this in, in the description, but it covers this use case. When we have something, when we have type error that would be used as a constraint somewhere, we can actually do this in a much more principled manner um, as described on, on the proposal. I'm not gonna get into the details there. This use case where we're using type error at some other kind, not kind constraint, it's not as easy to see how to fix this. And so right now uh, and for the foreseeable future, it's going to remain a little bit flaky. But even being a little flaky, you can still use this to customize your error messages. So if you're making some fancy library that you think that custom error messages might improve your user experience, please give this a shot. Thanks very much for watching. Hope this has been fun. Goodbye.